Okay, so this is where we stopped the last time. What we created so far. Now, we have here our own domain name. And this domain name is pointing directly to our server. That is good. Now, this is working. The user is going to our domain provider. The domain provider is forwarding to AWS. AWS is forwarding to our router. And the router is forwarding to our computer. And the problem that we have at the moment is that I get um, a new IP address from my internet provider like every 60 minutes, I don't know. But every now and then I get a new IP address. And whenever I get a new IP address, this route here from here to here is broken. So it's broken until I update here the IP address again. And I don't want to do that manually all the time. So I was thinking, hey, let's see if there's already something online. And the good thing is there is already a script that I can use. And I run this script on my computer or on my server. And this script is checking, hey, what's the public IP? And if the public IP has changed, then I will update this. And thanks to the great AWS CLI of Route 53, or that is also supporting Route 53, that was um, pretty easy. That was pretty helpful. So, yeah, this is what we will do. We will first get a new, um, create a new Docker container based on an Ubuntu image. Then we will install the AWS CLI. Then we will install curl, uh, vim, and something else, I don't remember. And then we will start our script and see if it's working. And what we also need is, of course, an access key here. So to make this work, like to get access so not everybody can access, um, or can make these changes, this IP changes. It's like for authentication. Okay, enough talking, let's get started because I don't know how long this will be working until my internet service provider gives me a new IP address. Okay, let's see. Um, let's clear this. Now, what we want to do is similar to our Nginx, we want to run um, want to run a new Container, we want to create a new container. Um, and what we, in this case, to make it simple, in the next video, I will make it a little better, but to make it more understandable, because there is no, uh, or, um, I didn't want to use a container that is already working, I wanted to create my own. That's why I use this batch at the end to step right into the container, or oh, not batch, sorry about that, batch. Okay, now the container got created in ACC, you see this change here? This means we are inside our container now. Uh, this here is Windows, now we are inside. Now we are on our Ubuntu system. Now what we want to do first, I get update, to get the latest stuff. <coughs> Okay, this usually mm, takes half a minute. Done. Then what we need is install curl because we have to make some requests, some HTTP requests. And curl is a pretty lightweight library for doing that. So it's pretty. what we also need is AWS CLI. Let me install Vim first. Okay, takes longer than expected. And uh, JQ. Actually, to be honest, I have absolutely no clue what JQ. No clue what JQ is for, but it is used in the script. And if I don't install it, I can't execute the script. So. Don't have time to check what it is, so I installed it. 
Now, this takes some time. What can we do while we are waiting? Mm. <coughs> we can get our uh, security access key from AWS because we need one of those. Okay, now let's get here to IAM and um, let's create <coughs> let's create a new user add user uh, engine x yeah we'll call it an engine x and we say all we need is programmatic access now we want to create a new group and yeah, okay. all security experts uh, route 53 um, and we will filter <coughs> for all route 53 shit, uh, stuff so sorry about that oh come on why isn't that Route 53, showing my results. Now, sorry about, I did, I did not check what, um, what policies are really needed for this, what we are doing. And this is not a best case scenario, just selecting everything so it works, but I will give this group access to all Route 53 policies and I will add the user to this group. Now, if you want to make this right, check out which Route 53 policies are needed if you want to do this in production. I'm not doing it in production, so this is okay, but not perfect. Okay, now what we see, we have a username, Nginx, we created the group route 53 and we added the user to it. Now we click down here on create user and here we go. Now we have an access key so we want to store that and we also want to store our secret access key. Now to all you hackers out there I will delete this access key after I'm done with this video. So no need to type this access key and try to use it for yourself. <laughs> okay, now uh, let's go back. Okay, uh, this is the um, AWS CLI we want to install, so it's asking us questions. Please select the geographic area in which you live. Okay, that is Europe. Um, and the time zone, Berlin, number seven. Okay. Um, and while we are still here, what I can say about, about this. Now, you see this access key only once. You have to, if you want to use it, if you want to continuously, continuously use it, then copy this access key and the secret access key into a um, password manager or wherever, or in a um, um, in security. But um, later you will not have access to this secret access key anymore, only to the access key ID, but not to the key. This has, to, has something to do with security issues. Okay, finally, AWS CLI is installed. Now, what we do on this container, AWS configure. And here we go, it's asking us for the access key. So, I will copy the one I just created. It will asking us for the secret access key. No need to enter this, no need to enter this. Um, now, the next thing we do is, 
I will show you the script, which is really good. So, here we go. On GitHub, mm, you can find the script, update DNS shell. Uh, what this script basically is doing, here you have to enter the hosted zone ID, the name of your domain, it's pretty much it, the rest, no need to configure. Oh yeah, this is interesting. Here you get uh, um, the public IP. <laughs> so you don't have to check online. Like if I enter this, here we go. It always returns the public IP of my internet connection. That solves that issue. Um, exactly. And here it is creating the JSON, which is being sent to AWS. And here's the, yeah, the AWS um, command, which is um, sending the file that got here created, and the update file, sending it to route 53, and if everything goes fine, the script, or not the script, but the IP should be updated with the value that is found here. But it's only updating if the value has not changed. So yeah, exactly, that's what this is for. So it's getting the latest IP and then it's checking, hey, is my latest IP or my current IP on AWS the same or has it changed? The one I got at the moment is different. Okay, so we take the script and uh, how do we call? Well, first let's let's create a folder called AWS because yeah, I don't want I don't want to put the script like all the way on root. Okay, and change to this folder and then create a, a file called DNS, dynamic DNS, and copy the script into this. Okay, that yeah, looks good. And as I already mentioned, now I'm not an expert in Vim, so I don't know that many shortcuts. I know hardly any. So <laughs> this is why I'm navigating like this. But what I can tell you, what you have to do is uh, in the script it says AWS2, but um, that did not work for me. I had to change on this line and on the line all the way at the bottom from AWS2 to AWS. I don't know why, but maybe I installed the wrong AWS CLI. Maybe there is a newer version. I don't know. Now, what we also have to find out, um, right, here we go, we can nginx dot lumabuild.d. No, we know that. But what is our hosted zone ID? We have to get that. And you also get that, of course, from AWS. Now, let's get back to Route 53. And when you click here on hosted zones, I'm not doing that because I don't want to show you my hosted zone uh, or the ID of my hosted zone. But when you click on this, then you will see an ID of your hosted zone. And then you copy the hosted zone and enter it here. And then you save the file. And the next thing you got to do is you have to change the modification of the file. You have to make it executable. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Battery life is low. Let me check if I can finish this video. Oh, eight more minutes. Okay, that's that's okay. Uh, change modification. And now, so we can test this. Okay, battery life is back up again. So what we did was change modification here. And after checking with ls minus l, we can see that it's now executable, which is good. Now, 
to prove that this is working because at the moment it's working so we can run the script and it would still be working so it doesn't really help us so what we do is um, let's go to <clears throat> AWS again and click on edit and we set this to an IP which is not our IP and we save the changes and then we try reloading this again um, maybe it's still cached somewhere okay I found a better idea I started Opera in private mode and I was calling it here and here you can clearly see it's not working <coughs> because it's pointing to the wrong IP <coughs> now let's get back to our script and before I started let's go back you see this IP this here I want you to remember it it has a 2 in the end now, after we start the script it should be back Um, what the fuck? Okay, this looks good. Okay, now here it did read the IP that is um, stored in AWS and it found out, okay, IP changed, so updating records. And uh, when we refresh here, yeah, we can see. And now when we go back to Opera, reloaded now it's working so let's go back to the PowerPoint what we have is we have the user sending request here to the um, provider going to AWS going to the router going to our computer and now what we added in this video is a script that is able by using AWS CLI to update the IP address here. So whenever the IP address of our network is changing the public IP address, we update it here. Now, at the moment, my at the moment this script does not run automatically, but we will in the next video show you how to run it automatically how to start the script automatically and then we will decide is 60 sec seconds okay or do we want a shorter amount but we're almost there so this was a big step this CLI script okay so I hope you liked the video and see you at the next video which will be the last one to this topic and in case you have any questions I'm glad to answer them in the comments <laughs>